All right, so today I'm going to do a custom health bar. You can see it up here. When I get hurt, boom, it drops down, changes color if I go below 50% health, and there it goes down to red. I'm below 25% health. Ooh. Boom, I die, and it should respawn. And you can see that there's like a little shading in the back there, so you can see about where it's supposed to be, like right in here. I thought that would be pretty cool. Let's go ahead and get a fresh world and build that. So I got a fresh world right here. All right, so I'm going to go to my starter GUI, screen GUI, and then add a frame, right? Here's my frame. That's going to hold my health bar. And I'll change this to health frame. Cool. I'm going to put the anchor point right here so I can center it and put it near the top of the screen. So let's go to anchor point on the health frame. 0.5, that's the X, and then zero for the Y. There we go. Now the anchor is right here. And that's where you attach it to your parent, your parent object, which is the screen GUI, which is the whole screen. So now when I go to position, it's going to be easier to center, right? So for the X, for the scale, I'm going to do 0.5 and zero. For the Y, I'm going to do point, point zero 0.01 and zero. That'll move it up towards the top. And now let's just change the size make the size maybe 0.4 and zero on the X and 0 0.050 0 on the Y. There we go, we got a nice little health bar. It's kind of big because you want to have a label here. I'm assuming you can put the label on yourself, but uh, I, I, I think I'll go with this. I'll have it nice and big. All right, so for the frame, let's go ahead and put a text label and that's going to be our adjustable health, right? It's going to be the bar itself. So let's call that health bar. Health bar. Cool. Let's size it so it's appropriate. So under size for X, I'm going to say one and zero. So it's 100% of the X on the scale, zero pixel offset. One and zero on the Y. So it's 100% of the Y and zero pixel offset. So it's basically the entire frame. All right, cool. Let's get rid of that text. So go down to text, clear out label. We don't need that. And then let's make it green too. Let's go up to background color three and we'll make it green. There we go. And now it's square, but Roblox games are using a lot of uh, rounded stuff. It's, it's more popular. So let's go ahead and make that rounded. Let's go to our health bar, hit the plus, type a U in and you're gonna get all these UI helpers. I'm going to do UI corner and you can see now there's a little bit of a rounding. There's like a eight pixel rounding by default. Let's go ahead and change that to like 50%. So 0.5 and zero on corner radius. So go to corner radius on your UI corner and that's going to make it circular on the, on the smallest end, right? So if it was a, if you had a perfect square for your label, this would look like a circle now. All right, and now I want to get rid of that white in there. The frame is just going to hold my components. So I'm going to make the health frame background transparency one. There we go. Cool. But now when this shrinks, I want to have like a little gray background so I know about where my health should be if I'm 100%. Well, I'll be able to tell if I'm not 100%. So let's click on health bar, do a control D or, or right click and duplicate one or the other. And this health bar is going to be background bar, background bar. And that's going to be like a gray. So I'll go to background color three here, click white, and then go about halfway. Yeah, 121, that's fine. Hit OK. Now notice my background is in front of my health bar. I don't want that. If you look down your background bar, You'll see this Z index. So that's the ordering in which Roblox is going to draw out your UI components. The higher the order, the closer it is to the user. So let's go to our health bar. That's a Z index of one also, just like the background. Let's make that two. There we go. Now our green health bar is in front of our background. But on the background, I'm going to make the transparency a little more. Let's go ahead and shrink our health bar here so we can see it. Boom. I don't like it that dark. Let's go background bar transparency, background transparency, mm, 0.5. That's pretty good. And then let's go and return our health bar to its normal size. 
whoops, kind of hard to get. Here, we could just do this. Go to size down here. There we go. And make the X one. Perfect. All right, now we have our health bar. Let's go ahead and do a script. So on the health frame, hit the plus sign, add a local script. Let's call this update health. Cool. And let's get rid of the default health bar that Roblox provides you because so we don't need it. So I'll do a variable for the starter GUI, local starter GUI, game get service, starter GUI. Let's get that variable starter GUI and do a set core GUI enabled call. And then we're going to get the GUI type, right? Core GUI type dot health. So it's going to be for the health. I'm going to say false. So that's going to turn off our health bar. All right. And now let's get our tween service so we can move the, the bar. We could change the size of it smoothly. So we'll say TS for tween service, game colon get service, tween service. Let's do local player because we need the health. So we need the player and we don't have to do this server side. We can get the player's health client side. We just don't really want to update things like health on client side, but we can read it. All right. So we'll say get service players and I'll do a dot local player. There it is. Local player. And then from the player, we need the character player dot. So do local char equals player dot character. Or if it's not there yet, if it's still loading player dot character added weight, right? And that will ensure that we get our character when, when the character is added to the game. All right. Now we need our humanoid from the char. That's really what we need because that has the health on it. So we'll say char for character, wait for child. Once again, the humanoid not, might not be ready. So do wait for child humanoid. Um, let's get a variable for our health bar because that's what we want to change uh, the size of on the X anyway. So local health bar script dot parent dot health bar. So here's your script right here. Update health. There's the parent. That's the frame. Then we're going to go down to the health bar, right? And that's how that works right there. Let's do a local function update health bar. Cool. Um, let's get a variable for the health local health and that's going to be a percentage between zero and one so we'll get the humanoid health right and then we'll divide that by the humanoid max health i spell that right good and that's that's going to be our our current health let's get a tween info variable for how long we want the tween to last so I'll do tween info new I'll just say 0.2 seconds. You can make that update as, as fast or as slow as you want. Um, let's go ahead and make a tween, local tween, TS create. We're going to tween on the health bar. We're going to need our tween info. And what we want to tween on is the size of the health bar. So we'll say size equals UDIM2. And we're going to do a from scale for that. All right, let's go ahead and put this on the next line because it's getting kind of long. And the first value is the X and we want it between zero and one, but we want it to reflect the health. Well, good news. Health is a value between zero and one. And this is going to be the Y. We don't want to change the height of the bar. So we'll just keep that at one. Then we'll do a tween play. And we don't have to do a, uh, a completed wait because we want this to update quickly. We don't want to have to wait until something is, until you get to a certain health, even if you might be getting hurt again. So we want it to fire as many times as it needs to. So let's just call that update health bar. That'll be read in when you first start up your game. And then we're going to, to get the humanoid, get property change signal and set it to the humanoid's health so that anytime the humanoid health changes, the property change signal is going to fire. We will connect that, um, that event to this update health bar. Boom, we're good to go. So now 
Let's just go ahead and add a zombie to the scene. Oh, look at that, drooling zombies. Let's play it. And unfortunately, we didn't change color yet. We, we still have to do that, but let's just see if we have some responsive health bar stuff. All right, that's looking good. And our default health bar is not on. So unfortunately, this should be red now, right? So let's go ahead and fix that. Let's change color depending on how much we got hurt. All right, so we'll do if and how much do, how much we got hurt is going to be in this variable called health. It's going to be between zero and one. So if health is greater than 0.5, that's 50%, right? Let's make that green then. We'll say, what do we want? Health bar, background color three will equal color three, new, what's green? R, G, B. So zero, one, zero. And you can see that green right there. That's cool, that's what we want. Let's do an else if health is greater than 0.25, then we'll change the color. There we go. And that will be yellow, right? You can see the yellow right here. And if you don't know those numbers, you can just click on that and just select it. But the, the reason this is gonna work is, this is an if construct, only one of these are gonna get, uh, gonna get, gonna get fired. So if we're at 0.6, we're gonna be good. We're gonna come in here, read this, turn it green. If we're at 0.4, we're gonna skip over this, and we're gonna drop down to here. All right, and we need one more. Let's go ahead and just copy this. Because my typing isn't that great sometimes. Boom. This is going to be less than or equal to 25%. All right, and then we're gonna make it red. And let's see, what is it, R, G, B. There we go, there's our red, that's what we want. Looking good, let's play it. Cool beans, we're at yellow. And we're at red, let's make sure that it comes Ooh. back when we die. I like it. And what you'd want to do is put like a little label here somewhere or move this around wherever you want it. And then you'll know what it is. You can't just really have a bar floating around, but I figured you could probably swing a label yourself. Anyway, I hope, uh, I hope this worked out for you. I will see you in the next video.